My name is Devin Gafty, and I visited the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute's uh, Tetherless World Constellation from Ju January 2010 through February, and I wanted to show you how to build your first DataGov demo. So you can go to this URL right here, uh, data-gov.tw.rpi.edu slash wiki slash building underscore a underscore demo and you can see the page that I'm on right now. Um, basically, I came from a background of just knowing MySQL and these sorts of technologies that are more conventional, uh, more run-of-the-mill that you see uh, throughout the internet, and uh, I'm coming from that level of experience and wanted to show you basically how you can mash through the data as quickly as possible to get something working to show that you can actually be using this in your own work. So. First, what we want to do is we want to select a data set. Uh, one that was interesting is data set 32, the earthquake data for the past seven days. Um, this is from the Department of the Interior. And you can go here for the details and go to this page, data set 32, for the uh, different facts about this data set. What we want to do, though, is just kind of get working as fast as possible. So we'll use this Sparkle query right here to try out something right away. And we'll see what a Sparkle query kind of looks like. So we'll put it in, and we'll get these back. They're not very interesting, but it shows that everything's working. And let's change our Sparkle service to the Joseki service, which is the one that we're using for the DataGov sets. So we'll grab this URL right here. We'll plant it right here. Sent through our query. So this seems to be working. And what we'll do now is try something a little more specific. Let's look at a few chart let's look at the first thousand magnitudes from the data set 32. So put this in and see that this is working. And what we have here is the subject of the triple for these different entries and then these different magnitudes coming in as this O or object, which is just a variable that's being passed in right here. When we say select SO, we could be putting in any sorts of variables here. And they're dictated, the result is dictated by this line right here where we're selecting the subject for anything that has the predicate DDP32, which is this URL as defined by the prefix with the magnitude and then picking out the object. So, to get something more useful for what we might want to use in a, an actual visualization or demo, uh, we can make our query a little more specific and instead of grabbing just the subject, we'll grab the region. So what we have here is the actual regions that these earthquakes are happening. Uh, this is about mid-May, so what we're seeing here is just a whole bunch of little earthquakes throughout California, Hawaii, Alaska, the usual results, this all seems fine, and we'll actually do something with it now. So, if you're going through this page, there's also another page that you should look at, which is um, Sparkle for Beginners. If you haven't played with Sparkle before, just interesting to know and under understand what's actually happening here and how Sparkle works. So what we're going to do now is actually use a real statement that I've cooked up over here. And basically what it is is select this prefix or data set 32 and then select the latitude, longitude, magnitude, and region for these earthquakes. So from any data set, select the magnitude, region, latitude, longitude, and then filter against all of these where the magnitude is more than five. So what we want to do essentially is grab the first thousand uh, earthquakes in the data set that have a magnitude earthquake over five or you know some sort of significant earthquake. And then what that will return will be used in a Google visualization. So I have the query right here. We'll actually go over here and show you how this is working. Basically, I've just put it on my URL. This over here is on my actual website, uh, slash sparkle queries, 
slash working dot sparkle and then you pass that in as the Sparkle query URL and then use the Sparkle service, the TDB dash data gov, and then run this Sparkle query and see in the HTML version that you're getting the right data set back in. And so we have the latitude, longitude, magnitude, and the region. And there seems to only be about you know 50 or so major earthquakes over the last seven days. So then what we can do is use that query and change a few parameters so that it works just fine in a Google visualization. So this is, you know, this the sort of most basic case for an HTML page where you're going to be using some JavaScript to pull in a Google visualization. Uh, here we're loading in the Google Maps API. You're going to need to get your own key. Right here is where you'll put it in, and key. And this is all on the actual page over here so that we can be you can go back over and grab this same HTML and change a few things and be able to run your own. And then loading in a few more APIs, uh, loading in the map package from Google, and then setting on load callback to draw the visualization. And this function draw visualization is what we'll actually be running. So you have a query, and that's basically the Sparkle proxy query that we were using back over in this page, except one thing is different and that is the output instead of being HTML is now GVDS and that'll be the Google visualization data set type uh, and the service URI is the Joseki Sparkle endpoint that we're using for data.gov and then the query URI is the website URL that I have and then the location of the file where this is so when we actually run this, what will happen is we'll do this function draw table where it will grab the latitude, longitude, and the region and then append the magnitude into the region so that when we click on any location, it'll actually have the, the location uh, stated and then a break or a BR and the magnitude of the, the earthquake that took place in that location. And then we'll add those rows in and it'll show up in the in the map div right here where we've set the width to 800 pixels and height to 600 pixels so it'll be a big map and it'll be pretty simple just big map so let's actually look at that page now now I'll double click that file and then bring it in and we can actually watch in the net right now it's grabbing the sparkle proxy data it's grabbed it and now we have our Sparkle generated data set in a Google map. And so we can see that in southern Greece there was a magnitude 5 earthquake. We can use this like any Google map. We'll be clicking these different locations off the coast of Jalisco, uh, offshore El Salvador, etc. And we could start you know, manipulating this Further, instead of doing the filtering on five, we can take that out and just do a thousand return and refresh this. And now we'll have all of these earthquakes. Every earthquake in this data set will come in limited to a thousand. And depending on what you're actually doing, you could do further uh, pruning based on latitudes and longitudes or have some sort of service that runs on top of all of this and once you get the data and actually start doing more advanced work but this is just a pretty quick proof of concept on how we can be using the Sparkle uh, data for actually useful uh, visualizations uh, on a quick scale here. So the sorts of pages that you will want to look over is building a demo and if you want a little further information you can go to how to use Sparkle or Dataset32 um, and there's a few links throughout the article on how to build a DataGov demo that explains the various parts that are being used in more depth. Thank you very much for watching.